have received lots of questions regarding what type of IELTS you need to write to be able to come onto the NMC register as a nurse or a midwife who has been trained outside the UK. This is what they have to say. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Midwife Jamie. On my channel, I talk about life in the UK free practice in the UK and I share my experience as an immigrant living in the UK as well. If any of these topics interest you, please subscribe, hit the like button and the notification bell as well. To my returning subscribers, the love is deep. I really appreciate the love you're showing me. I really appreciate. Thank you so much. Let's get into today's video. The UK NMC is the regulatory body for nursing and midwifery practice in the UK and if you want to register with them that you need to meet their English proficiency requirements. The UK is an English speaking country so I agree with the NMC saying that you need to be proficient in that language to be able to practice in the UK. The reading and writing, communication and everything is done here in the UK with English. If you are not confident speaking in that language you are going to find it very difficult communicating or relaying information to your patients. The NMC UK accept three types of evidences for English proficiency. The first one I'm going to talk about is that you must have completed a pre-registration nurse midwife or nursing associates program that was taught and examined in English. During that program, you must have spent at least half of your time interacting with patients, service users, their families and other healthcare professionals. And at least three quarters of these interactions must have been in English. Most of us Africans are not able to meet this criteria because even though we are trained in English back in school, it's really hard for us to communicate to the three quarters percentage that they are looking for to be able to meet this criteria. It is hard because we communicate in our native language when we have our patients to be able to give the maximum care we need to provide to them. So that is the reason why most of us Africans are not able to prove that we have communicated with our patients to that percentage that they are requiring. The second evidence that the NMC accepts is that you have practiced recently in an English speaking country such as Canada, Australia, US, just to mention a few. I'm going to leave a link for you so that you see the list that NMC has provided as English speaking countries. So if you have practiced more than a year in any of those countries, then you would need to provide contacts of your employers so that NMC will get the verification from them and get you onto the register. The third evidence that the NMC accepts is the IELTS or the OET. So you should be able to achieve the required band scores in writing, reading, speaking, and listening. So I'm going to take them one after the other and break it down for you. The NMC accept the IELTS academic certificate or the IELTS for UKVI certificate to be able to get on the register. So people have been asking, is there a difference between the IELTS academic and the IELTS academic for UKVI? There is a difference. It is the same in terms of format, content, scoring, and level of difficulty. However, the test report form which contains your results is slightly different to show that you have taken the test at an official IELTS for UKVI location, which is approved by the UK Home Office. I would advise that if you are coming to the UK, you are sure you're coming to the UK, then do the IELTS for UKVI because you don't want to give any chance to Home Office to say that they don't trust where your IELTS results is coming from. It's the same test same difficulty same scoring system so if you if you are bent on coming to the uk i advise that you go for your ukvi to not give any reason to the home office to deny your visa now it comes in two forms so we have the paper-based test and the computer-based test it's the same questions same scoring systems but it depends on your choice now what are the scores you need to get so you need to get an overall band score of 7.0 you should be getting at least 7.0 in reading 
and listening in speaking and at least 6.5 in writing. The NMC accepts if you are going to combine your scores and getting the requirements they need. So now there are certain things you need to consider before you'll be able to combine your scores. Initially, before you could combine your test scores, you should have sat for the first and the second one within six months but there is a good news now you can wait and prepare and get yourself ready to write the second one so now they have extended the number of months within which you need to write the two tests which is now 12 months that's a full year for you there is no need for you to rush you can take your time and prepare to write so as long as you are writing the two tests within the same year you are able to combine the test. The next thing you need to do is make sure that you are sitting for all the tests. You cannot sit for reading, writing, and speaking only. You need to make sure that for the first one, you sat for the four, and the last one, you have sat for the four components as well. You should not score below 6.5 in either reading, speaking or listening and you should not score below 6.0 in writing for the two tests if that is the case then you are able to combine the test to be able to register with the nmc and now the occupational english test which is the oet does not have types as ielts do it is just one type oet and then it has also got forms. It's accepted when you have done it on paper or on computer or you've done it at home. So all these three forms can be utilized. You should be scoring at least band B in reading, a band B in speaking, and a band B in listening, and at least a band C plus in writing. You can combine OET results as well, just like the IELTS combination. So the first one is that you need to write the two exams within 12 months. The second thing is that you should be tested for all the four components as well. And for the two exams that you have sat for, you should not score below the grade C class in listening, in reading, and in speaking. Or you should not score below C in writing. In this case, you'll be able to combine your OET results. If you have narrowly missed the band score by 0.5, then you can get supporting information from your employer. But there are requirements that you need to meet. The first one, you must be working in a non-registered role in the NHS or in any healthcare setting in the UK at the time you are submitting your application. So if you are working as an MSW, which is a maternity support worker, that is with the NHS or a care assistant or a carer that is in any other healthcare setting, then you qualify for your employer to give you a supporting information. The second thing is that you must have worked in that role for 12 full months and as full-time or full-time equivalent if you are working part-time. Okay, so now the third thing is that your line manager that you are working with should be the same person for at least six months. The NMC is only going to accept it if it is coming from two registrants. So the first is an NHS registrant who is a band six or a bar registrant staff or non-NHS equivalent. The second person who should countersign should be an NHS registrant ban 8A or non-NHS equivalent. Coming to the end of the video, I want to say that you cannot combine IELTS and OET results because they are two different tests. So you can combine two IELTS test scores or two OET test scores. Thank you for watching this video. Kindly share, kindly subscribe and hit the like button. Is there anything that you want me to talk about? Please leave me a message in the comment section. Thank you so much. See you in my next video.